I see people joining. Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm Lisa Kasanovich, Outreach Manager with the Houston Parks Board. Welcome to the Hill at Sims community meeting this evening. We appreciate you being here with us uh, to provide you updates on initial improvements to the Hill at Sims. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Prefieres comunicarte en español? Enviamos tu nombre e email a info at houstonparksport.org y la semana entrante te enviaremos via correo electrónico la versión en español de esta presentación. Gracias. So now we're just going to roll through um, a really lovely video um, of the Hill at Sims. And so my uh, co-host co and MC, Lisa Griff, is going to lead us through that. Um, and by the way, this meeting is being hosted by Harris County Precinct 1. So thank you again for joining us. We'll get started soon. I don't hear the audio. Does anyone else hear it? The music? Pretty pictures though. Yeah, I think you have to unmute yourself, <laughs> my co-host. So again, there we go. Hey. I think that's a nice stopping point, maybe. <laughs> We're at about 6.33 p.m. I see a couple of people have joined us since we started playing that video. Those were just some beautiful scrolling images of the Hill at Sim site and some activities that we've had there um, in partnership between Houston Parks Board, Harris County Precinct 1, and the Nature Heritage Society. So again, for those who just joined, uh, welcome to the Hill at Sims community update meeting. I'm Lisa Kasanovich, be your MC for this evening. And uh, so we're going to take you really quickly through uh, the agenda and the purpose for this evening, um, this evening's meeting. And so we're going to do a round robin of uh, introductions again. We know some people may be joining us that didn't join before. So we want to always reintroduce us and the project. We want to give an update on our progress thus far with designing an initial set of improvements to the Hill at Sims funded by Harris County Precinct 1. We'll talk about how you can help us and how it, your input matters along the way and um, describe some next steps. So again, we're all gathered here this evening to provide this update and as well as listen to your thoughts. Uh, so feel free to interact with us in the chat. Um, we have people that can interact with you there and we can also make sure to answer your questions when we get to our, our Q&A portion. Until then, we just ask that you keep yourself on mute 
um, if you're not speaking. So we appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm also going to deploy our first poll question. We want to learn a couple basic things about people that are here this evening. So that poll question should go ahead and automatically pop up on your screen. If it doesn't, I always read the questions aloud and the answer, so you can type the answer in the chat, but this data does really help us, so please make sure you take it seriously and answer. Um, so what is your home zip code is the first question, and so our choices that we, we provided um, on Mac was 77047, 77048, 77033, 77051, 77045, or other. Uh, maybe you work in the area, but you live elsewhere. Um, oh, I, yep, I see Tom messaged me a zip code. Thanks, Tom. And I see other people are answering in the chat. We also have a second question to that poll question. Um, how did you hear about this meeting? It's we do a lot of advertisements. Um, our colleagues are out there pounding pavement uh, to advertise the meeting. So we wanna know um, exactly how you heard about it. And so what did you receive it through a precinct one email, um, use a parks board email through your civic association flyers, otherwise. Um, so we've, we always leave poll questions open for a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll and share the results. And I see some people were interacting with us in the chat, so that's great. Um, so we had, um, most people were 77048, but others probably uh, working in the area from surrounding neighborhoods. We still appreciate everyone being here with us this evening. And um, people heard it from Precinct One. All right, <laughs> straight from the horse's mouth, fantastic. So um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide. And this is a um, special video. So I'm going to introduce Megan Polak about Precinct 1. Go ahead, Megan. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Megan Palathra. Uh, thanks, Lisa, for the introduction. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am a project coordinator and planner here at Harris County Precinct 1. We're happy to have you this evening, and we really appreciate you joining us and um, for providing your input on, on our project that we are excited to share with you. Um, some, some new updates. And uh, Commissioner Ellis is actually provided a, a welcome message and I'd li we'd like to go ahead and share that with you now. Hi, I'm Rodney Ellis. Every Harris County resident deserves easy access to quality green spaces. Beautiful parks and green spaces can help reduce flooding and improve quality of life. They also improve community health, help build social connections, and expand environmental safeguards. We are committed to enhancing green spaces, especially in neighborhoods that have historically been neglected. In my home neighborhood of Sunnyside, Precinct One and our partners, including the Houston Parks Board, are transforming the Hill at Sam's Detention Basin into a regional park. This is a second community meeting where we're asking your input on what you want in your park. Your input will help us transform the Hill and Sam's Detention Basin into a park that everyone in the neighborhood and surrounding areas can enjoy. Precinct One's goal is to create more enriching community experiences, expand access to healthy recreational opportunities, increase economic opportunities, foster environmental resiliency, and bring communities together. Thanks for participating in this community meeting and invite your neighbors and friends to get involved too. I also want to give special thanks to the Houston Parks Board for managing this important project. I hope you have a wonderful and productive evening. Round of applause for the commission. Fantastic. Megan? Thanks, Lisa. And uh, I know we have uh, several uh, Harris County Precinct 1 employees on the line, but I'd like to go ahead and take this opportunity to also introduce Adidiong, who is with our community engagement uh, team. So Adidiong, uh, please feel free to say hello and um, introduce yourself as well. I see she's connecting to audio. Okay, hey, I made it. Okay, um, I just, uh oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I wanted to just say hi to everyone. Thank you all for uh, being able to join our second meeting. Um, that's really, I'm really happy to see you all here. Um, again, just make sure that you all are still staying um, 
involved and engaged with some of the things that we are rolling out. Um, I know that the Houston Parks Board, along with uh, Precinct One, are going to be working on some joint engagement projects in the future soon. So um, you will see some of that information and roll out later on. Um, and again, we're excited to have you all um, a part of the meeting. So thank you all for coming. Thanks, Anidio. And also, I'd like to go ahead and introduce a couple of the project teams working on the Hill at Sims project. So we have two concurrent projects that are happening right now. Uh, the first is the recreation uh, and trails project, which is a majority of the information that you'll hear tonight. And that project, as mentioned, is led by Houston Parks Board, um, along with the design team uh, and engineering teams of Half Associates and SWA Group. So thank you guys. Uh, feel free to, to give everyone away from the, from the engineering design and parks board teams. Um, secondly, we will be talking this evening about the bridge project as well. And that project is being led by Harris County Engineering Department and Agrarian Fields and SWA Group is involved in that project as well. So um, thank you all for, for joining us this evening. Um, and we would also like to thank Texas Parks and Wildlife Department um, and Representative Alma Allen and Harris County Delegation for some grant funding that we are excited to have received that will help us uh, build the initial improvements for this park. So um, I know we have another little um, uh, section down at the bottom. So we'd like to also hear from you. So in the chat, please feel free to introduce yourself and maybe include what it is that you might be excited about um, at the future Hill at Sims Park. Thank you, Megan. I see. Alicia with the uh, with HISD takes instructions very well. <laughs> She's already in the chat introducing herself. Yes, everyone, please uh, take this opportunity to introduce yourself and also maybe note which neighborhood you hail from. Show your neighborhood pride in the chat. We want to get to know you as well. We just want to reorient you now um, uh, back to the just um, an overall aerial view of the Hill at Sim site. Just the star on this map notates where it is in the uh, city of Houston and greater Houston region. It is south of Sims Bayou and east of 288. And so um, you can see in the aerial in the top left, we kind of notate you know where Scott Street is, 288. Um, it's kind of looking, what would you say, at least it's looking. Uh, is it looking northeast? No, <laughs> I'm trying to get more of myself. <laughs> and um, and so airport there in the in the in the background, and I uh, see that beautiful hill at Sims site right along Sims Bayou. And so um, always good to just reorient ourselves with the site. And so we um, undertook at the outset of this project, we undertook kind of a, um, a massive kind of data collection and from other organization of exactly what's all going on in this area. And there is a lot, which is really, really exciting. And many people on this call are part of what's going on, as you see listed in this map. Um, we've got a lot of great nearby projects. And so um, throughout uh, this process, Houston Parks Board and Harris County Precinct One are organizing meetings with other agencies and other groups to ensure we're all on the same page and the left knows what the right hand is doing. And so we can um, you know, also build upon and, and leverage each other's work. So this map just says lots of great things going on. And um, also we mentioned the Hill at Sims site is south of Sims Bayou and um, the Sims Bayou Greenway. So we just wanted to reorient you to that as well. Uh, if you don't know, but Hill at the Sims, sorry, Sims Bayou Greenway runs east to west uh, from Milby Park, uh, 225 East, all the way to the west to the Harris County Blue Ridge, Blue Ridge Park, um, right along uh, Blue Ridge Drive, uh, kind of uh, ending near Hillcroft. And so uh, the Sims Bayou Greenway along that bayou will be 20 miles in length, around 20 miles in length. Uh, so that's really, really exciting. And we are continuing to make progress every single day on that. Um, our project in construction right now is between Scott Street and Buffalo Speedway. Um, it is a 10 foot wide linear concrete trail along Sims Bayou with connections into Margaret Jenkins Park, the Houston Sports Park and Townwood Park. Um, we are um, in active construction right now. There's a couple pictures here and we are hoping to wrap that up about April 2022. 
Um, so there will be a continuous trail from Harris County Blue Ridge uh, Park all the way. Um, oh, I know Richard's on from the uh, Houston Park Board to remind me. I think it ends at MLK and an airport. So um, quite, yep, that's the ending point. So quite a long way, making good progress. So at this time, I'm gonna turn over to Lisa Griff, also with the Houston Parks Board to take you through um, our framework for the initial improvements. Lisa? Yes, yeah, so we just wanted to talk, uh, show this again. This is our original planning study. And at the beginning, we looked at the Hill at Sim site itself, which includes the detention basin and the large uh, rectangular uh, site to the south of that. Uh, and then we also looked at some adjacent uh, sites to the north and to the west of Sims Bayou that are owned by Houston Parks Board and City of Houston to look at the whole area as kind of a connected system of parks and trails. And of course, the bridge project is a very important uh, aspect in that entire project. And we also looked at what we could do at the site. So at the north end of the site in green, you can see it was mostly a nature focus with trails and, and water access and landscaping uh, and things like that. And then further south uh, of the West Orem expansion, more active uh, activities such as biking and horseback riding and potentially playgrounds and other things like that. And then as you get further south, uh, more health focused activities because that's right across from the Martin Luther King uh, Health Center. But here today we are talking about the initial improvements phase. And we always like to start with this project, this uh, photo to show that amazing image from the top of the hill that everyone gets to see once you made the uh, walk up there. And so we are really focusing on the first phase on connectivity. So how people get to the site and get around the site and safety as well, making sure they can do all of that safely. And of course the bridge is a very important key in the connectivity uh, of this project to the Sims Bayou Greenway uh, to the west side. So that is what we are going to talk to you about today in a little bit. Um, but first, we want to talk about the first community meeting that we had, and it was um, exciting. We had a lot of great participation. We think the community is excited about the project. Uh, we heard that the main concerns were safety and security, that um, while getting to the site, so crossing over Scott Street, uh, that the the speed of the vehicles and the number of the vehicles there can be intimidating and making sure that the sidewalks are safe. And then while on the site, um, you know, people don't really go there very often. So as people with ATVs and things like that, that are, that are on the site, maybe stray dogs and animals. And so, um, and there's some dumping uh, in the area. And so wanted to, they concerned about that. And then generally the community knows the site is there, but hasn't necessarily been there themselves. So not that familiar with the site itself. And so some of the things we're doing in the kind of pre-construction uh, phase are talking to flood control district about putting up signs for no trespassing and having a fine for that. And then improving or uh, having additional um, security, looking out at the site so that they can um, patrol it more often and enforce that. We also looked at how we might restrict some access from ATVs to the site, and you can see that on the diagram to the right. And so we, right now we're just going to focus on um, trying to stop ATVs coming in from the south by um, providing a row of kind of bollards in this location and then um, go from there and see how that works and maybe introduce more as time goes on if they need it. Then also to make sure that the community knows the site is there, the precinct has these great signs that tell you a little bit about the project going on. And so we would put one of these up and at this location, you can see a group at the kind of entrance uh, pathway at um, right across the street from Cloverland Park towards the Hillett Sim. So it would be in that area so that people know that the site is there. And then the third thing we do would do is have activities on the site. And so I'm going to hand it back to Lisa Kay uh, to uh, talk a little bit about that. Thank you so much. Yes, it's um, 
not just about project design for us, it's all about activation and engagement in the spaces that we're working in. And so a fantastic partner in this process has been Nature Heritage Society. I know we have some board members on the meeting with us. And so um, Teresa is their executive director and she has been phenomenal with continuously leading activities at Hill at Sims and nearby sites for quite some time now. And so uh, we thank her uh, for allowing us to kind of tap into her and her group. Um, it's been a great avenue to get input from for the site. And um, she sent us a little, a little video here. Um, but do we know if she's on? Maybe she wants to Hi, Lisa. Her. There we go. Hi. You want to talk about Nature Heritage Society for, for a quick minute? Oh, uh, sure. I'm Teresa Anthony with Nature Heritage Society. We've been um, conducting uh, activities at the site for several years now. We try to do hikes once a month, except in the really hot summer months. What you're seeing now is a group of children and families that uh, were enjoying the site a year or two ago before the lockdown. We are really looking forward to the development of the site as we are an organization that encourages families outdoors. We take them fishing, canoeing, um, camping, all sorts of different types of outdoor activities. And that's our mission to introduce disenfranchised families, especially to outdoors and the benefits of being in the outdoors. Thank you so much. And I highly encourage anyone to uh, like them on uh, Facebook. They also uh, send out flyers for their activities. Um, definitely follow them and uh, attend their, their activities. They're really fun and engaging and, and you learn a lot. So thanks so much, Teresa, for your, uh, all your work to engage people and help activate uh, this area and get people moving. And we have a poll question. We do, thanks. Yeah. It was there on the screen, wasn't it? <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and deploy the second poll question. It's a two-parter again. Um, as I mentioned, if it doesn't pop up on your screen, I'll read it. Uh, we want to know from you what activities you would like to uh, take part in at the Hill at Sims site. So you just um, heard uh, about the Hill at Sims walks um, and the hikes. And so we want to know if you would be interested in doing one of these activities, a Twilight Hill walk, a nature hike during the day, a cleanup, uh, like a volunteer cleanup, uh, picking up trash, stuff like that. Um, tree planting, planting some native trees um, or other, maybe you have other ideas and you want to put them in the chat for us to consider. Uh, the Twilight Hill Walk, if you're intrigued about that, um, it would be, you know, kind of in the evening when the sun is setting, uh, maybe, you know, people would, um, we'd have a, a kind of like a, a wildlife expert with us, um, hopefully you see some bats flying around <laughs> and people can download an app on their phones to kind of look at the astrology, look at the astrology um, it might be a, a pretty nifty, nifty little, little get together. Um, so we're curious if you'd be interested in that, or again, if you have other ideas, put them in the chat. I see that's already happening. The second question is, have you taken part in a nature heritage society activity? So that's already been open for a while. I'm going to go ahead and in that poll and share the results. And so people are definitely interested in, in taking part in or continuing to do nature hikes. Twilight Hill Walk got quite a few votes. So excited to see that, right, Teresa? <laughs> and then um, looks like we've had a pretty even number of people. Yes, some have heard of NHS, some no, um, but they'd like to. So uh, we can put the link um, uh, to Nature Heritage Society in the chat so that people can learn. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and put our uh, email address. And as Lisa said, we're on Facebook. We're also on Instagram. Please uh, like us, and if you want us to put you in our email blast, our monthly email blast of activities, we'd be happy to um, put you on our list. And I'm going to put our email address in the chat for all of you to uh, take note of, okay? Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And another uh, activity that we uh, already have a, a, a bird watch leader for is bird watching there. At this point, there are lovely, lovely um, species of birds, butterflies, all sorts of things, but bird watching is another um, activity that we are going to be exploring. 
Yay, excited. We'll have to join. Thank you so much. All right, great. So turning it back to you, Lisa. Right, and now Matt um, is going to oh, talk yeah, Matt. Thank through you. the uh, initial improvements. So I hand it over to Matt. So, hey, everybody. I'm Matt Bumgarten with SWA Group, and I'm part of the design team. Um, you know, it's been interesting being part of the process. We talked a lot at the beginning about sort of big picture um, kind of uh, views from the air, if you will. And, you know, we're at the point now where we're starting to zoom in and get our, our feet on the ground, boots on the ground, if you will, and hopefully eventually feet on the trail. And so we've been going over technical data, survey trees, elevations to try to implement some of the ideas that we've been hearing um, throughout this process to date. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is an overview of the initial improvements that Lisa had mentioned. Um, I think one thing to point out, I know it's a little bit small, um, but there's about three and a half miles of trail. Um, and one of the things that we've talked about on the site is a diversity of um, kind of interesting areas. And so in the, the purple is the main loop trail, that's concrete. There's a trail along Scott Street that is in the dark blue. That's another concrete trail. And then we've talked a lot about the idea of nature. And if you look at the green um, lines on the map, those are nature trails that are going through kind of areas of primary view through some of the forest conditions, some of the meadow conditions, and having re really great views of the site. Um, and if you look at the, the legend off to the left there, there's a couple other items that are a little bit hard to see, but we're gonna zoom in a second here. Um, crosswalks to get to, the, get to the site is addressing some of the safety concerns that we had mentioned earlier. And then Lisa had also mentioned um, kind of safety barriers and restrictions to make sure that we're keeping the site um, clean and um, kind of in a great condition. So then also on the bottom, we have been working with Metro. There are, look, Metro has been doing some studies on how to improve access to the site through their services. And so we've had discussions with them as well as to how to best connect to the site itself. So if we wanna to go to the next slide. Um, so as we get our, our feet on the ground, if you will, I think trying to get an understanding of character is pretty important. And so starting on the Southern part of the site, there is, you can see off to the right here, the blue trail. Um, just on the very bottom, there's a, a yellow line there. That's um, the clinic, MLK clinic is just off screen there. And the goal with this trail was to connect people to that facility. Lisa had mentioned in the future, there may be healing gardens and some, some other active um, uses in that area. We're trying to jumpstart that connection. And so part of the initial improvements here is a trail that reaches all the way down there. So in the sketch to the right, you can again get the character of that trail. The goal was to keep it generally open um, to help with safety, a sense of safety and security. And then a little further up in the sketch, you can see the idea of connecting to some of the Metro stops as well. So next slide. Um, so now this is further to the north. And so um, looking again off to the right with the little map there, you can see the yellow crosswalk. Just across from there is Cloverland Park. And so that's an example of um, kind of access to the site. And so thinking about how we safely cross and then what the interior um, amenities are. So you can see with the photos there, we are including parking. Um, it's looking about 40 parking spots. So you can walk to the, um, to the park from your neighborhood. Potentially you can drive there, you can bike there. We're trying to um, basically make it accessible to a variety of different users. Next slide. And so you can see this is a, a conceptual sketch of sort of the character at the um, crossing from Cloverland. Uh, kind of a pretty cool thing here is you can see the, the hill from that crossing. So it's a really nice introduction to the site and that feature. And there'll be seating, there'll be some special paving. Um, there's opportunities there to expand on sort of the nature centric um, landscape features of the site. So we're talking about some interpretive areas in this area as well. Next, please. So we mentioned um, in green, the nature trails, and these are meant to be much more passive, um, not paved in concrete, but they would be mowed nature trails that go up um, on some of the periphery hills. And so you can see here, this is one of the really cool views on the top of the hills there. And so we'd anticipate having 
small nodes, some sort of signage, some sort of nature interpretive element up at the top there too. And then you can see in the perspective, in the distance there by the water, that would be where the main trail is. Next slide, please. Um, so one of the things that we heard throughout the previous public engagement process is the desire to get down by the water. Um, understand a lot of people really love this site um, for fishing use. And so that was a really strong thing that we heard. So on the, um, you can see to the right there, there's, um, we're proposing a water access area. There'd be a trail that goes down to it. Um, a small dock where you could cast into the water. My understanding um, from residents is that this is one of the great places for fishing on the site. So we tried to accommodate that, um, that area. And you can see, uh, you know, this is a great place for wildlife, uh, turtles, birds, whenever I've been there in the past, it's just a really great place to be on the site. Um, and then this is the main loop trail. And so, you know, it's about a mile and a half around the basin. Um, and so you can imagine a variety of uses. Um, I've seen some questions about biking. Um, certainly biking, certainly running, walking, jogging. I have a daughter who's a gymnast walking on her hands. Um, you know, the goal is to basically afford a diversity of people and interest to take, um, you know, be able to experience the wonders of this site. And so you can imagine this is that one and a half mile loop. We would have seating. Again, we'd have interpretive signage. Um, potentially some trees. I know that was one of the earlier poll questions about um, people's willingness to come out and plant. I think the community engagement portion of this project, certainly planting is a big thing to bring the community together and also help with, with shade and sort of the nature element as well. Next. I think that's the, uh, that's the last slide there. And so I think now we're going to mm -hmm. do a poll question. So I'm going to go move on to the bridge. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and deploy that poll question. So I'm launching it now. Uh, again, it should pop up on your screen. The question is, how would you use the Hill at Sims amenities once they are complete? Would you use them to run, to walk, um, to ride your bike, just to enjoy being outdoors? Or as Matt just said, enjoy the wonders of the site. Sorry, Matt, I love that. And um, would you go there to walk your dog, um, to fish, watch birds and other life or other? I see someone wrote in the chat if there'll be an area to ride their horses. So I think I know what that person's answer is. Um, so, but that's kind of the information we're looking for is how people um, will use the site. And now that you see, now that you see what we, what we have planned. Um, so um, I see lady in the chat saying walking, enjoying nature. So that's great. I would do the same thing. Um, yeah, Vicki says planting fruit trees and community vegetable garden. Yum, yum. And so these are all great. I appreciate it. And so it's been about a minute. As I said, I leave them only open for a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and in that poll and share the results. So let's see what we have to walk and enjoy the outdoors or top winners. But Definitely, I know people want to use the site for a variety of different reasons. So we really appreciate y'all participating in these questions. Um, so we, we know more about um, how people are going to use the site. It's always neat to discover how people use sites once what, parks once they're developed. <laughs> always great to watch that process. All right. So now I'm going to turn it over to Dan Dimitrician with uh, Harris County Engineering Department to give you a fantastic and exciting updates on the design of a wonderful bridge across Sims Bayou. Dan, turning it over to you. Great. Thanks, Lisa. Um, good evening, everybody. Just uh, since our last meeting, just wanted to kind of go through and show what we've been able to accomplish. Um, the last meeting, we had just started our design work and we hadn't really had developed the bridge, but bridge design much beyond just some very conceptual renderings. We've now gone in through our uh, study phase and our preliminary design work and we've come up with a, a, an op, a concept that we're going to be going forward with with the project. Now first you can see here our schedule uh, is showing is we would be having our design complete by August of 2022, um, big complete again November 2022 and we construction would be tentatively completed in the quarter, quarter three of 2023. Next slide please. 
So we'll start off going through some renderings here of the project. There's a, um, you know, there's again, we've been able to develop the bridge into quite some, you know, quite a bit into what this is going to be towards the final product. There might be still some minor changes, but this is sort of the main, the main concept of the structure here. Um, so this is, this is showing the west approach, or sorry, the east approach to the bridge um, on the Hill at Sims Park side. Um, you can see here where, you know, again, we're trying to make this to be somewhat of a unique signature bridge. So we don't have you know, just plain standard items. Um, we've been working with our, architects on our team here, uh, SWA group, and they've come up with this very interesting looking, nice little, um, you know, layered uh, access to the bridge. Um, next slide. And you can see from that, standing in that viewpoint, you can see the, to this be looking towards the south. So to your left is the detention basin on the pond and straight ahead is the bridge and the cantilever section um, that would be shown there. Uh, also, too, you can see we plan to have a little bit of seating on the approaches, just something just to rest, enjoy the view, uh, you know, take a picture or something like that. Next slide. Yeah, the cantilever section now, we're trying to make this into something that's, that's very special, and very unique. It's meant to be um, not just to give, you know, not just a, a viewpoint, but something that's, you know, a, a bit of a, a pillar for the community and something that's, um, you know, that's memorable. Um, so the first thing here, you can see the view here. Uh, you can see how if you look to the left, bottom left corner of the screen, um, we are proposing to include a viewpoint. So at this area, from the last uh, pier of the bridge, the last tower, to the end of the structure and the cantilever section to the left, um, we would be removing the, the metal railing, replacing the full sheet glass, the entire height of the bridge truss. And at the very end, we would, we would step down and have a viewing area that would be you know, pretty much full height of the truss, which is almost about eight feet tall, so that would all be encased in, uh, in safety glass. Also, too, with the step down, um, we would make the steps wide enough that, you know, and have some uh, some material there that we could have, you know, seating area for people to you know, sit, and enjoy the view, um, overlooking overlooking the lake and the uh, the hill. Um, so this would be, you know, thinking there'll probably be a lot of pictures from from this angle here in the future. But this is this shows, you know, the you know kind of the the area and ambiance we're trying to capture with that structure and with that with that viewpoint um, as well. Having the structure go down, you end up having, you know, we don't end up having someone standing tall right at the end while we're blocking the view. And then finally, this is the west side of the bridge, the approach plaza there, again, very similar to the east. And we would have some benches and again, very similar in design, but um, this would be tying into the Sims Bayou Parkway trail. So this would also give an opportunity for folks that are using the trails, you know, if they need a rest, have a stop and, uh, and have a break here. Um, so with that, again, I talked about the schedule and we are very excited to see this bridge come to fruition. Thanks, Dan. And so he talked about, Dan talked about the bridge schedule. And so uh, the schedule for the initial improvements, we are heading towards completing the design in October of this year. And then we would go into permitting and bidding, uh, which means we would hope to start construction in the first, second quarter of 2022. And so a construction would take about a year. So by the second quarter of 2023, just before one quarter before the uh, bridge construction is complete, the uh, trails would be complete. So um, we are working hard towards that. So I think at this point, we are ready for Q and any... A. Q and A. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> comments and yeah. those kind of things. Yep. So we uh, received uh, just a few questions in the chat. Um, so I'll go through those first. But if you want to ask a question um, for the whole group to hear, just use the little raised hand feature. Um, you know, you should have a menu that pops up and uh, be able to um, do a little raised hand under um, reactions button. Um, but if you can't figure it out, just unmute yourself and we'll help you out. Um, so the questions we received, um, we got a question about, will there be bike racks? Lisa G, will there be bike racks? I would assume so with how much the commissioner of bikes everywhere, he'd be <laughs> if he arrived at the site, couldn't park his bike. <laughs> Absolutely, bike racks for sure. 
Great. Those are going to be included in the design. Um, we also, yep, the question about horse riding will be the access for horses at the site. And at this point, I'm not sure about the horse question. I'll have to get back to you on yeah, that. Yeah, I know a lot of people will be using it, trying to use it for a variety of different reasons. Um, so I'll have to think more on that. Um, I see also we had a question about solar trees. Ephraim, I don't know if you want to unmute yourself and talk about solar trees uh, or kind of explain your, your question if you're still with us, Ephraim. Maybe he jumped off. He jumped off. Ephraim Jernigan is uh, with the South Union Community Development Corporation, uh, the solar farm. So uh, I don't know. We'll have to find out more about his question. Um, so other questions coming in. Uh, will access be provided to the top of the hill? So we know that's a big focal point of the site. The answer is yes. Right. So, yeah, well, so well, that'll yeah. be one day. <laughs> I think for now, people can walk up the sites. Uh, there won't be a concrete trail that goes up to the top of the site in this phase. We had been doing um, investigations on the hill just to make sure it is stable uh, before we figure out what um, needs to be done up there. So that would be com coming in a future phase. And this phase is including the kind of uh, concrete um, loop trail at the bottom. The but people can just always walk up it. Regardless. Yes. Yeah. The, people yeah. can walk up it um, currently. Yes. Yeah. Okie dokie. Um, next question. Uh, will community bikes be available? Like bike sharing? Um, maybe with like a partnership. That is a good idea. I have not. Yeah, we need to talk to B-Cycle about that. We can definitely look into it. We had not, not that I know of, have looked into it at this point, but it's a great suggestion. Yeah, it is. That is great. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, and uh, okay, well, I think that's it for questions from the chat. I'll give it a moment if anyone wants to unmute themselves to ask a question for a group. Uh, now's the time to do so. I see lady says there's a lot of horse riders in Sunnyside, so. There is. A definitely lot of something. And we know that the southern part of the site has a um, stables on it currently, so um, we can talk to them as this project progresses and see, um, get some information from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all along Sims Bayou, definitely. There's a lot of uh, people that own horses. One of the things I've been interested in is, is if there's people know of any uh, local artists that um, would be good to engage in maybe uh, things that could happen on the site. And so that would be an interesting thing if people can, if you have any suggestions of those local artists or local people that can be involved in, uh, you know, teaching things, um, you know, yeah, Tai Chi sure. or meditation <laughs> or. Yeah, yeah, we'd love to develop a list of those groups. Um, yoga, yeah, definitely. Yeah, sure. Yes, um, we'd love to. We'd love to get a list of, of people that um, you think might be interested in helping to activate the site. Um, Nature Hunter Society can do yoga at the site. Sign me up. And, we can go to, and then we can go to Hope Farms after to do some uh, do some grocery shopping down the street. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would be a great place to do watercolor painting as well. I don't know if anyone does that, but it would be landscape painting would be fantastic there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got a question uh, about the Sims Bayou Greenway. When is the Sims Bayou Greenway Trail in this area scheduled to be completed? Uh, April of 2022 is when we're uh, estimating it to be complete. Let's let's say spring, spring. <laughs> Um, as we know, he's been getting quite a bit of rain lately, but um, yeah, it's going to be completed uh, or estimating the springtime. I know this, the slide earlier said April 2022. Um, again, connecting those three kind of green spaces along the four green spaces, Townwood Park, Margaret Jenkins Park, Hillet Sands, and Houston Sports Park. Uh, a lot of concrete is already poured already. We've got some bridges in, got a bridge in along the way. Um, so it's really exciting. There's a, there's lots of work going on. I'm sure if we go out there, we see the bike tracks in the mud of people already uh, trying to go up and down it. But can't get that concrete poured, can't get it poured fast enough. 
You know, there's a lot of neighborhoods along the way, like Sugar Valley, um, that's right near there. I'm sure we'll see residents going out to use it. I believe we've got someone here from Sugar Valley also. So I know that neighborhood's right near the site. So we appreciate y'all being in the meeting. Absolutely. Yes, then if there's no other questions, we can move on and wrap up. I think so. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are any plans for drinking fountains along the park? In the park? Not drinking fountains, no. Not for the first phase. Okay. We can continue to take input on amenities. It might be helpful. All right. I think we're good to go. Um, so next steps, uh, continue to spread the word about this wonderful project. Um, everyone who registered this evening is, you are now in our, in the Harris, Harris County Precincts email list. Um, and so uh, you'll be receiving updates on that. And you can also proactively sign up for updates as well. Um, my colleague Courtney is putting some links in the chat right now. One of them is to the project webpage uh, for the Hill at Sim site. Um, if you know someone who couldn't make it this evening, we will place a recording of this meeting and a PDF of the presentation on there. Um, and we, there is also a link uh, that she'll provide that's also on that webpage for you to sign up uh, for updates. Um, so be sure to do that. And you can also share your feedback. Um, I believe she's copying and pasting those links into the chat right now. Um, if you have any thoughts or comments, questions, concerns you're thinking of after this meeting, email them to us and we will consider them. And uh, if you remember uh, previously, we did a poll question about what activities you would like to see at the site. And so we did that for a very strategic reason. We want to um, continue to think about what activities we can do to engage people at the site and help um, educate uh, people about what's going on, as well as give them opportunities for input. So, um, you know, being cognizant of, you know, current conditions right now, um, you know, we want to be considerate of that, but we also still want to, you know, find ways to engage people where they are. And um, so if we do uh, do any future activities, not meetings, um, related to this project, it will go through that email blast list. That's why I'd be sure to sign up for that. Um, Lisa G, did I catch everything or you want to add anything? I just see there's another question in the chat um, oh. from Vicki uh, Pinkston uh, about restroom facilities and whether there'll be any of those. And in this first phase, we're not planning on having restroom facilities. Um, there is the Houston Parks and Recreation Department is working on the Cloverland Park, and we're hoping in the beginning that the restrooms there can be used. But in future phases, we have suggested uh, restrooms for the site as it uh, grows in amenities and in usage. So um, if that's something you're pulling for, then keep letting the keep uh, asking about it, and it'll it'll bump up to the uh, top of the list of um, the things that we'll be providing or the the precinct would provide next. And I know that the uh, Harris County engineers have done a uh, restroom buildings that are net zero. So they are off the grid with uh, solar and water or they're, they're, they make up you know, they use solar and they um, recycle water and things like that. So it's pretty uh, amazing uh, and a potential for the site. I see a question about Margaret Jenkins Park. So I was just, I was typing the answer, but I'll just say it. Um, the Houston Parks and Recreation Department manages uh, uh, that park. So um, their emails ask parks at houstontx.gov. Um, they're the ones who manage that park. Um, but also uh, the Sims Bayou Greenway is, is uh, going through the southern border of Margaret Jenkins Park. And so we'll be making a number of little improvements to the back end of the park to make it look real nice. Um, and then once the greenway is built through there, we'll kind of maintain that area um, really well. We'll have weekly cleanups and biweekly mowing during the growing season. Um, so it, it should look really nice, a nice addition to Margaret Jenkins Park. So just wanted to catch that. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, Lisa G, did I interrupt you or were you finished? <laughs> no, I was good, I was finished. Okay. All right, great. Well, um, we will continue working on the design. Um, we really appreciate everyone's input they, they gave this evening. And so before we close out, I want to, you know, Megan uh, with Harris County Precinct 1, you want to offer any closing remarks? 
Thanks, Lisa. Just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us and uh, for your ongoing engagement in this process. Um, we're happy to hear from you, and we're really excited to be getting kind of this, this first uh, phase and the bridge underway. So stay tuned in your email for updates and uh, future activities. We're looking to hopefully do some things this fall, um, and hopefully COVID will <laughs> improve by then and, and it won't be a, a hindrance. But um, please stay in touch with us and uh, stay tuned for, for additional outreach and activities. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Lisa G, maybe you want to stop sharing your screen so oh, we, can yeah. all, we can all see each other and people can unmute themselves and wave by. Wave by. We always love to take a take a screenshot whenever people are leaving. So Lisa G, you want to stop? Oh, there we go. The Sorry. Screen? There we go. Yay. I get to see everybody. All right. I'm going to count down for us. Okay. You got three seconds to put yourself on camera. Three, two, one, wave and say hi. Oh. <laughs> got it. Good job, hi. everyone. That was, that was a very good coordinated effort. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all so much oh, again for, for being here. People are us. popping on now. Yeah. Do you want to take one more? Can you do one more. <laughs> we can. One we more. Can, given everybody. We can do one more. Here we go. Okay. Three, two, one. Bye. 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 Got some voice with that. Yay. <laughs> All right, everyone have a good rest of your evening. Thank you for being here with Houston Parks Board and Harris County Precinct 1. Have a safe night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.